What's the word, y'all? Man, it feels good to say that. Y'all, the, the NBA season being here today, first of all, monumental day, uh, a holiday bigger than Christmas in my eyes when basketball comes back. Um, this is a very exciting day, and, and today I want to talk about the two games. I'm probably going to spend more on game number one than game number two because there's a lot more takeaways. We're talking about a brand new team, uh, brand new players coming back off injuries and things like that. And the second game, it was just Clippers versus Lakers, right? Two of the top teams in the Western Conference. It could have gone either way, but of course, I will spend some time there. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Welcome to Called Game. Let's talk about the first game of the day. Um, a complete blowout. But it was, it was fun for the first quarter, definitely. To see Kyrie Irving coming back and dominate, to see Kevin Durant come back and dominate is, is a beautiful sight. Because you know, as far as Kevin Durant goes, coming off a, a, an Achilles injury at his age, there's question marks on how he was going to look. But if you watch him at all during the preseason, you could tell that he is he is here and he is uh, he is looking great, man. To see him come out and drop 10 quick points in the first quarter was amazing. Um, I'm excited about this team, man. Of course, I don't want to overreact to anything I saw on day number one because it is a very long season of 72 games and, and things can change. But I, I do want to give a lot of love to the Brooklyn Nets because they came out and that offense looked amazing. You have a guy that's heavy ISO and, and, and uh, Kyrie Irving. You have a guy that's heavy ice on Kevin Durant and yet the ball never felt like it was sticking it never did they were flowing people were hitting shots carries the verse coming off the bench looking to me like the offense looked deadly and if I was the other teams in the league again it is against a Warriors team that maybe is worse than what we expected but they just came out and they dominated and I would be afraid if I was the rest of the Eastern Conference because I mean, I guess you were counting on Kevin Durant not looking as good as what he did in that first game for you to feel com com comfortable and confident. But that man just, <laughs> that man was different. And Kyrie Irving, this ain't breaking news. We all know Kyrie Irving has the nicest handle ever. Yes, I said it, ever. And it's just everything he does is so silky smooth on the court. Love Kyrie Irving as a basketball player. Um, it, it, it's going to be really fun to watch the Brooklyn Nets this season. But I, I want to spend a lot of time on the other team because uh, this is a team that was, for me, super hard to project. I made a video at the beginning of the uh, offseason when they were they got the second overall pick before the draft, like right after the lottery. And I was basically saying that I was excited for Warriors basketball again because Clay Thompson was back in the gym at the time. Steph Curry was healthy. And then they had the second overall pick. We kind of knew it was going to be Wiseman, but we weren't completely sure. Wiseman fits what they were trying to do. And I was I think the video said that the Warriors are the most dangerous team in the NBA. Freezing cold take. Um, but But a lot of that. Is because Ky uh, it's because Clay Thompson is injured. By the way, if Clay Thompson is there, we're having a different conversation on open night. I, I must admit. I mean, I saw some people on Twitter saying things like, um, "Um, when Draymond comes back, things will be better." And I'm like, Draymond ain't that big of a band aid to cover up all the things that we saw in today's today's game. Again, like I said, I don't want to overreact to what I saw, but there is some some gleaming issues with the team and that's why I said it was so hard to project because we know Steph Curry is one of the best players in the league the best point guard in the league and he has this gravity to him on the basketball court of course but but what we have realized throughout the the five games that he played last season and the first game of this season again that is a very small sample size but if he doesn't have his shooters around him it's way easier to guard Stephen Curry like Steph Curry needs and clay thompson need each other like love needs water you know what i'm saying it's just like they fit so perfectly we have two of the best shooters of all time playing on the same team and it's just hard to defend at the end of the day and now with steph curry having to kick it out to wiggins or steph curry kicking it out to kelly Oubre, who looked bad today it is so much easier to be like mm, Oubre's cool but we much rather double the guy that's the greatest three-point shooter of all time. Wiggins, we don't worry about that whatsoever. Eric Pascal, cool guy. We ain't worried about him. We're going to bring that double team. And there was a time in this game, and we're talking about third quarter at this point, so it was already 25, 30-point game. And there was a lineup out there of, like, Steph Curry, Kelly Oubre, Wiggs, Eric Pascal, and Kevon Looney. And I was looking at this lineup, and I was like, they should be double teaming Steph Curry. And guess what they did? They double teamed Steph Curry. Right, the, the one of the greatest parts about Steph Curry's game is not necessarily his ability to score, but the threat of him being a scorer. And a lot of that dies when he doesn't have teammates around him, because because it was hard to to chase around Steph Curry when you also had 
Klay Thompson out there. Obviously, it's hard when you have Kevin Durant. And this is a season for Steph Curry. Again, I don't think Steph Curry has anything to prove. I need to put that out there. I don't think he has anything to prove. He's a two-time MVP, multiple-time champion. He has nothing left to prove. But what I'm saying is that for, for this team to be successful, Steph Curry's going to have to try to bring more than what he what he did. It's weird to say. We're talking about a guy that is so, so elite on the offensive side of the ball, but you can only do so much as a guy that's that's not going to be super quick to get around this defender or like I, on Twitter, it turned into like in my mentions, it turned into a Dame versus uh, Stephen Curry debate. And I didn't I didn't want that to happen. Like like ranking players are so lame to me now in 2020. It was something I would do when I was younger and stuff, but I, I don't want to do that anymore. But like there's. As great as they are, they're so different players. They're just such different players. And this is one of those seasons where you want to see Steph Curry have the Damian Lillard type year from last year. Damian Lillard's type year from last year got them to the bubble, into the playing game, into the 8th seed, and I think they took game one, yada, yada, yada. Steph Curry's going to have to have that type of season on his own, and throughout the course of his career, he hasn't really had to do that because Klay Thompson, I, I'm starting to think that the world is realizing this, but throughout the last four to five years, Klay Thompson has been severely underrated from the average basketball fan. Sure, he has a couple all-star appearances, but like he is similar to, to Steph Curry. We're like, you can't leave this man anywhere on the court. And when you have two of those guys out there, it's ridiculous. And then that opened things up for guys like HB before Durant got there and allowed Draymond Green to be Draymond Green. And, and then Draymond Green, before the season started, like a week ago, he said like, this is a championship or bust season for them. And that is, I understand having the, the wanting to win a championship. That is the end goal for all 30 teams at the end of the day. But championship or bust is harsh when you have the players that you have. I, I, I think I mentioned his name earlier, but the way Wiggins plays, man, it, it frustrates me as a basketball fan. Because I know, and you know watching this video, all the potential that, that Wiggins has. And every year I go into the new season like, okay, this could be the year that Wiggins does what Wiggins should be doing. This could be the year. And again, I don't want to overreact based on game number one. Who knows the 71 games that are remaining, he could take off. But this game, it was just like when he was on the court, I was like, please get him out. Please get him out. But the problem is, the reason why this team was so hard to project, of course, they had uh, Clay Thompson going out and Draymond Green not playing well last season. But this is a team that lacks depth. And one thing that the Warriors have had throughout all of the titles run is they've had depth. They have Iggy. They have Sean Livingston. They have Vestas Azili. They have players like that that'll come off the bench. The Brazilian Blur, remember? Barbosa was killing the game. They'd always had blur when they were a contending. They always had a depth when they were a contending team, and they just don't have that this year. As much as I wanted to sit Wiggins' ass on the bench, I'm like, who who do I want to put in? Juan Toscano? You know what, Wiggs? You airballing two shots is probably better than what Juan can put us on the offensive side of the ball. So this team lacks depth. They're missing their second best player, and it's so heavily like Steph Curry would have to put on the backpack bigger than any backpack I've seen in a long time. So because of that, Draymond, this is not a championship or bust season. It's not a contending team. And who knows? Again, I don't want to overreact. I still don't want to project this team to be in the lottery this season. But it wasn't promising what I saw. For them to put up the, what, 85 points, if that, this game was, was kind of sad. Now, I do want to say some of the shots that they got were good shots. It's just that they, they don't have good shooters. The shots that Wiggins were getting in that corner, those are good shots that you want to see people take. But it's a below average three point shooter taking it. You know what I'm saying? And the last thing about the Warriors before I move on to the second game of the day is that they are missing that second ball handler type guy. There were so many turnovers I saw where like Ken Bazemore was bringing the ball up the court and he was trying to make a simple pass to cut and then they just jumped the pass. It's just like they don't have a secondary ball handler whatsoever. And I think that comes in with Draymond is healthy and, and ready to play. But they desperately need somebody other than Steph Curry to play because, again, Steph Curry is so deadly off screens and is so deadly without the ball in his hands. But nobody that played today could get him that ball. Again, shout out to the Brooklyn Nets. They looked amazing. The Warriors a little bit, a little uh, afraid of. Now, let's talk about the second game of the day. There's not really that much to talk about with the second game of the day because we do have two of the best teams in the Western Conference or in, in the entire league going at it, and it's going to go on either way. Of course, both teams have new pieces, like Serge Ibaka look really good tonight. I'm already seeing Lakers fans really mad at uh, Marcus Saul for the stinker of an opener, but it's Marcus Saul. You're going to get some good games. You're going to get some bad games. I think a lot of what Marcus Saul brings is hoping that it, it happens in the playoffs and kind of ignoring what he did in the bubble of last year. I keep telling people this, whether it be on my podcast 
on Twitter or, or whatever that like I am taking the bubble performances from players with a grain of salt because it was such different circumstances than what they're normal to. It just is. Like the people that were averaging 40, I don't expect Jamal Murray to come out and average 30 this season. I do want him to be better, but I'm not going to look at the bubble and if he comes in and averages 22 instead of the 30, I'm like, this is a disappointing season because it was so different. So I don't want to look at Marcus Saul's very bad play in the bubble in the playoffs of last year. I'd be like, that's who he is now. But in the first game of the season, it was pretty rough. Um, one thing that was encouraging with the Lakers is that the Montrez Hero Anthony Davis minutes looked great offensively and def- defensively. It, it's always a, a pleasure to watch Anthony Davis defend wing players because he just can. And that's probably that's why I have him as one of my top defensive player of the year players this year, is because like there were times he was guarding Kawhi and did a very good job. Like there were also minutes where Anthony Davis. Davis and Kyle Kuzma were on the court together, but Kuzma was guarding Surge while Anthony Davis was still guarding um, Kawhi Leonard, which is like just Anthony Davis is that guy. But shout out to to Paul George and Kawhi. Um, Paul George has become the butt of a lot of jokes, and the, the, the Clippers have been the butt of a lot of jokes after blowing their lead, and all of the things that have been going on in their locker room, yada, yada, yada. But everybody knows that on his best day, Paul George is the man. He just is. And today was one of his best days. Today's one of his best days. It's one of Kawhi's best days, too. I was very curious to see what type of play we get from Luke Kennard because I'll be the first to admit it. When he was playing in Detroit, I didn't get to watch him much. So when he got that extension, I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. But I, I'm curious to see how he performs this season to see if he'll live up to the money that they got, uh, they gave for him. Um, a lot of good minutes from Patrick Beverly, all his stupid shenanigans. But, like, he really was impactful offensively and defensively this game. Um, and I hope that we finally this year get to see this in a series, whether it be in the second round in the conference finals whatever because these two teams match up so well together they just do um and I did see the the Clippers running a little bit of zone in there and that kind that kind of hurt the Lakers the offense in the first quarter for the Clippers was was so fluid and then the second quarter everything got stagnant from 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 them but the first quarter was so nice Serge Ibaka was setting the screens and, and picking and it was it was just really good play from um from both teams at times you know in fourth quarter the Lakers kind of fell out and I kind of even as I'm recording this video the game is not completely over but with four minutes left with no LeBron on the court, I'm just assuming they've, they've thrown in the towel, which is fine. I'm very curious to see how much of this season we see of LeBron um, because this this game particularly, it didn't feel like he was on the court for that much. He did have a spurts where he was taking over, but it didn't feel like he was out there as much as you would want him to be out there on the opening night. But again, it was, what, 50-something days ago they won their championship, so the shortest offseason of his life. He wasn't probably wasn't able to spend that million of dollars that he do in the offseason to keep his body right. So this will be a coasting year for LeBron, I'm guessing. Um, but overall, a great game for the second one because, again, the first game wasn't, wasn't living up to it. I don't know how I'm going to do these for the games like tomorrow or the nights like tomorrow when there's so many games. Maybe I'll watch as much as I can and try to talk about what I can. We'll see how this goes. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave it a like. Uh, oh, in the description, there's going to be a link to um, – I've been using the app Flick, and I have my own group. If you didn't know what it is, it's kind of like Discord type, but it's just for our community um, to talk about sports. So join that. Let's talk about games. Not tonight, though, because I'm going to bed. But, like, tomorrow I'm, I feel like I'm going to be live um, typing and chats and things, talking about things. So download Flick, the app, and um, join the group, man. Thank you all so much. I'll see you all tomorrow soon. Call the game.